How's it going, everyone? We're back to another Hot Toys review, and this time we're going to be reviewing the Spider-Man 3 New Goblin, otherwise known as Harry Osborn. Uh, this was a, this is an older figure, as many people probably know. Look at that box art. That's pretty amazing. Hot Toys always has really cool box art. And then, of course, they have like a whole bunch of details written on there, you know, about the Green Goblin and who he is. Um, I do like the box too, like just, I think it's awesome when Hot Toys does 3D box art like this, um, which is really cool. Mine one, unfortunately, is a little bit damaged when I ordered it. I got it on eBay, but because it was, you know, the damage doesn't bother me that much, you know, it's just the box. But because of that, I got a really good discount on this figure compared to how much it usually costs. So I'm not complaining. You also have artwork on the back of the box as well. Picture of the figure itself, which looks really cool. Yeah, Hot Toys actually did multiple layers of uh, plastic here, which is interesting. So you have this outer layer. So here's your first look at the figure in the box. Now let's check out the accessories. So as you can see, this figure comes with a ton of accessories compared to other Hot Toys figures, hey, even especially compared to Spider-Man, which you would expect with this figure because in the movie, he does have a lot of different weapons. Starting off with the sword, that we call it, the sword that he uses twice in the movie. Got quite nice detail in there. Really nice paintwork on the hilt. Um, sculpting and everything. For an older figure, I mean, this looks amazing. It looks like it's made of real metal. It's actually pretty sharp, kind of flimsy, but not where it feels like it would break. Um, but yeah, it definitely looks really good. And then you have two different knives that it comes with. With the same level of intricate detail on the blades. Some nice paintwork on the hilts. And look about the same on both sides. Even though we didn't, from what I remember, we didn't really see these in the movie. It's really cool that they included them. Um, just has some bonus accessories, which is really nice. And then you have the famous um, pumpkin bombs that turn into blades, the flying blades. I don't know the technical name of them, but surprisingly really good paint work on these considering how small they are. And they do feel kind of fragile but really the paintwork is just what sells it. it. looks really good. On every angle, you know. And then you have the classic pumpkin bomb, which looks pretty good too. Uh, for the size, there's a lot of details. My only complaint is that I wish they would have included maybe two more of these that would have been pretty cool or maybe at least an extra pumpkin bomb i was kind of disappointed that there's only one of course you have the arm blades that come out which you can interchange on the gauntlet on his arm which i'll show later and these are pretty nicely done they got detail they have that multi-layered blade look like there's three blades in a row And the cool thing about these is that they're actually articulated. So you can move them any which way. I did not expect that. Although I should expect that with Hot Toys because they usually make most of their accessories functional. So, so that is really cool that they did that. And they're all articulated on the same single area right here. You have the hands, which are just two fist hands, which is standard. And then the other hands it comes with are on the figure, which will be shown later. But they got good detail on them. Uh, they look like they're, you know, leather or whatever their material they're supposed to represent. Uh, they definitely have that look with the sculpt and the, you know, a little bit of paintwork on the knuckles. Of course, you have the, well, glider, I guess I'll call it, you know, that's what it was called in the first movie. And I, I don't really know what they call this one technically. And there's different nicknames, but. Now, the really cool thing about this, other than the way it looks, I mean, look at the paintwork. That looks amazing. Even the small little details right here, really great how they're able to do that. 
doesn't even compare to other uh, action figures of this uh, character. Uh, I mean, the only part that's kind of, you know, if you use the sticker for the computer, it would have been kind of cool if they had maybe a translucent piece over that to make, to sell the effect more. And if it lit up, because what the other cool thing that I was talking about earlier is this actually lights up. And so the switch is right here. Kind of hard to see unless the battery went out. Yeah, no, the lights are on, so you can barely see the lights on camera. But there are light up features for both of the fans. And there's some light up features for the uh, exhaust fume areas. And of course, the front right here, these green dots or circles, there's a light up function there too. Not the brightest lights, but just bright enough. Turn that off. And just the detail on the back here is amazing. And what many people may not know is that this, the blades do turn, the see-through parts of the blades turn at least, which is really cool. Like, you know, they don't even have to do that, you know, but it's so cool they did that. Um, it would have been even cooler if they did like a motor function, which they're now starting to do with the Iron Man Mark I figure. Um, but like this is an older figure, so I wouldn't expect that. Uh, and it's kind of small, kind of hard to probably pull off. But I mean, this just looks awesome. These are actually sharp. They feel fragile, so I'd be careful with those. Same with this one. It looks great. This is also articulated as well. You can turn 360. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then, of course, you get a stand for the uh, collider as well, which you can just slide on like so. I would be careful about how you put that on there. And then, yeah. It just stands up like this, as if it were floating. Um, I don't know how well the figures stand on its own without the stand itself, which is just a standard stand that many people don't like because it's too big. I guess it's kind of understandable because the, the glider, you got some texture here. There's no 3D. It's just a flat printed on, looks like texture of concrete. And then you have this kind of flimsy, is what I say sometimes, for the stand. And then you have the hook claw stand, which makes sense because you want them to be able to fly. And then you can just, you know, adjust the height of it and increase how tight this is around the uh, plastic stand piece with a screwdriver. You got a nice metal plate here, which is what I love. Uh, at least I believe it's metal. No, maybe it's plastic, actually. Never mind. But I do like how it's 3D and not just like uh, printed on. It's actually, it's got some depth, which is nice. And then onto the main one that people have been waiting for, which is the head sculpt of Harry Osborn. So the unmasked head sculpt is supposed to be representing James Franco as Harry Osborn. I think for an older Hot Toys figure, this looks amazing. I was kind of surprised. You know, I wasn't expecting much. I didn't have high expectations. But no, this is really good. Now, some people may say it's not perfect and... I could agree with that from certain angles, like this side profile here doesn't look exactly like him, but kind of like the Andrew Garfield head sculpt, uh, this looks a lot, a lot better from the front. I think that does look like James Franco as Harry Osborn, um, especially when you have the lighting and the angles right. Yeah, I think it looks amazing. Definitely worth it. Definitely doesn't feel like an outdated figure to me at least. Could they maybe do better now? I don't know, possibly. But like I said, for an older figure, it blows me away. And so here we have the full figure of Harry Osborn as New Goblin and the mask head sculpt. So starting up with the head, um, I think the mask head sculpt looks pretty good. Um, do I wish there was more texturing? Yeah, I think, you know, compared to the movie and behind the scenes photos I've seen of this mask, I think it's kind of flat. That's the only that's the real complaint I have. I just feel like there's no texture really, uh, which is surprising. And because I know, because I know there is supposed to be some hexagonal or some type of texture on the mask from what I've seen. So it's just kind of a flat green, which from a distance does not look bad. It looks good. Um, I don't think you know it looks terrible or anything. You have the sunglasses effect here with the translucent eye pieces. Uh, the forehead has skin texture on it. The hair sculpt is accurate all the way to the back. Looks great. Now, if I were to go above and beyond, I would say, wow, this mask would be so cool if they articulated the mask somehow. I had another head sculpt do that, but that might be a little too crazy. But I still think this is great. And I think the costume and tailoring is great, too. I mean, look at this. 
on the neck piece, you actually have a functional uh, snappable, uh, I forgot what those are called, but, you know, something, a strap that you can snap together and snap apart, which I don't tend to do too often because these seem like they're kind of fragile and they're very hard to, to work with in terms of snapping and unsnapping. So same with the zipper. I find the zipper is hard to work with too, so I don't mess with it. It does function from what I can tell. And I remember trying it out before, but it's kind of feels like it's starting to come apart. So, and this is a used figure, so I'm just going to be careful with it. Um, but yeah, I think that's great. They actually have a separate uh, fabric neck piece here with the strap and the zipper and everything multi-layered. The shoulder pieces, all of that multi-layered. This isn't sculpted. It's actually all, you know, it's fabric. And then you have the hook pieces, which actually come out of the hook of the ring and all that stuff, continuing on to the back. Lots of details. The only plastic part is these straps up here because they're smaller, but all of these hooks and everything, you got a mixture of mixed media of plastic and materials, and it looks great and multi-layered. It's just, it's amazing how they're able to get all this detail in there. Really well done, intricate. I think that's why I like this figure a lot. And I think this is an underrated figure and then, of course, you have the elbow pads, which are Velcro on. Like, they're held on by Velcro straps. And same with this part right here, which, interestingly enough, this piece actually is removable for one of those blades, even though it didn't have a blade on this arm. So if I were to remove the glove, this hand is the grip hand for the uh, bomb, the pumpkin bomb. Then I could take this off, and if I wanted to, I could put one of these blades on there. Well, I think it's backwards, so I'd have to turn it around, but, but yeah, you can actually do that. I don't know, I mean, it's just like a bonus thing. I don't know why that's there, I'm not complaining, but, but yeah, you could do that. And then of course, on the other one, you have all of those, all three of them for the different blades. And you have another elbow pad, which is, you know, all removable and stuff, Velcroed on. And this suit is flexible. And it has that nice glimmer and texture to it that looks like Kevlar, just like in the movie. You have these two belt pieces around the, uh, the front of the figure, which are snap on and off type thing. Um, they're pretty easy to snap on and off. Uh, this one is kind of like for the harness with the sheath. And then this is the belt for the other sheath for the smaller blade. So like all these unsnap and everything. And so technically, you know, you could remove all of these pieces. You can remove this. You can remove this whole shoulder and blade, uh, sword, sheath, harness. And then going down, just standard pants, uh, just like in the movies. It's, it's like dress suit pants with pockets. I don't know if the pockets, yeah, they're actually kind of functional. And they have belt loops and everything, just like real pants would look. Even Velcro for where the zipper would be. And then... You even have zip functional zippers right here around the feet area. Now, the only complaint is that this boot tends to come off very easily. So that's a real downside. And the boots to me don't have that good detail. They look kind of like plastic. They don't look very real. Like they would normally look with a figure. And this is an older figure, so I give it a pass. Um, but they are accurate to how they look in the movie. So it's just compared to the rest of the figure, they're just not as... Yeah, they're just not as good to, for me. For the glider, you have two holes for the pegs to put his feet on the glider in two different ways, either right here in the middle or on the edge. So you have a, ver a variety of what you can do with that. All right, so let's see what the blades look like on the arm. So you remove these pieces here. They just slide off. I just like to turn it like that and do it. And there you go. And you turn them the right way. And then you start with the smallest blade first. Easiest way to do it. And then the middle blade. And the large blade. Easier to do it like this, just to turn them off to the side and then rotate them in the right direction. So, and then articulate them in the right way. 
So then you can have the look when he had his blades extended on his arm, which looks really cool. I'm so glad that Hot Toys included this feature. Basically expect them to, they kind of have to. I mean, this is a really iconic scene where he had the blades come out of his, his arm. And yeah, it just looks awesome, especially with certain poses. Yeah, it looks great. You can adjust it however you want it to be. So yeah, you can have two different looks with or without the blades. Now it's, it's kind of a pain to put them on. So maybe, I don't know, I like the functionality of it. Um, that would have been maybe a bit easier if they just made one piece or, or maybe like they had one version where the blades are already attached and one version where they're out where they're not attached. It would have been easier to, you know, switch between the two. And at the same time, I appreciate the detail and the functionality of each individual one being a separate movable piece, because that's probably accurate to the movie. And it just makes it more realistic. So, yeah, it's a hassle, but it is more realistic at the same time. So, so you have a holster on the leg for this blade right here. Um, just kind of clicks in there. And of course, you have a holster in the back which I thought the sword would go into, but I was wrong. It actually doesn't. Because in the movie, he pulled the sword from his back. So I was like, okay, that's where that goes. But apparently not. The one that fits is this one. And it snaps in like so. And it stays in, doesn't fall out. So that's really weird. Uh, they didn't put like a thing where the sword can go all the way through. So that's kind of strange because that's not, I guess, 100% accurate to the movie. And... You don't have anywhere to put the sword, so I'm not really sure. Like, if you wanted to get creative and try to put the sword in the belt or something, uh, you could go for, like, a knight look, I guess. But, you know, that's yeah, it didn't really work. So I just kind of stick with these two holsters or sheaths or whatever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool that they're functional and all that stuff. All right, so in terms of articulation, starting with the head, you can uh, move it up about that high up. Maybe if you don't have the blade, maybe a little bit higher. And you can move the head down about that far, side to side, rotate 360, all that good stuff. And because of this fabric here, you give it gives you more flexibility. Now the neck, unfortunately, is not painted. It's not, there's no texture on the neck, but thankfully you can hide it just enough to where you can't tell. Because of the suit being a lot of this flexible material, you can move the shoulders up pretty high, even above 90 degrees slightly. And you can move them forward about, see, about that time, maybe, yeah. So that's pretty high, actually. You can definitely push it. And then you can move the shoulders back about that far. So almost 360, that's pretty close. It's like barely there, so that's great. And then the elbows, those are... Yeah, pretty far, over 90 degrees. I don't know if they're double or not. I can't tell. I'd have to take off the the, the uh, elbow pad there. And if you take the elbow pad off, I'm sure you could get even farther with the articulation on the elbows. And the hands are just standard. Now, this lip on the glove here does limit how much you can move it. You really can't move it that much, really just 360. In terms of forward and back, yeah, not really. You can't really do that too much unless you want the hand to come off. It's kind of tricky because you got that lip on the globe. In terms of the chest, you can rotate about, well, almost all the way. I wouldn't push too much because I don't want to break the harness. Of course, without the harness, you could probably go farther. And you can bend the figure pretty far. It's kind of getting looser now. The more you articulate, the looser this figure gets. It's maybe not the best body. Like I said, it's an older figure. Now you can move back pretty far too. Not too far though, is the harness. Um, in terms of the hips, you can move the legs up basically 90 degrees. And you can move the legs back. Not too far, it gets caught up there. And then you can move the knees, double jointed knees, that's cool. And you can move the knees forward. Actually not too much, you can't move them forward at all really. And like I said, the the, this foot always falls off. It's really frustrating. You have it to where there's some, there's a lot of flexibility, but then when you have the boot on, I mean, you can't really move it because you have this lip here. So, and it's rubber. So, 
you're not really going to get much articulation other than 360. All right, so let's see what the unmasked head sculpt looks like on the figure. So in here we have the unmasked head sculpt uh, for Harry Osborn, played by James Franco on the figure itself. So I think this looked great. I have no problems with this. Like I said, from the front, this is pretty spot on in terms of likeness. The facial expression too, how they actually had him looking angry like he did when he was attacking Spider-Man in that first fight scene. Like, that is pretty cool. I like the Glad they didn't do an open mouth because the eyebrows looking down like that is just enough to convey that emotion. And it looks really cool. There is some decent skin texture here. There's some decent wrinkles in the forehead. That's hard to see on camera, uh, but they're there. And there is a lot more detail in this head sculpt than people think there is for an older figure or for like the pictures of this figure online. Believe me when I say this head sculpt looks great in person. And there's a lot of details that just aren't carried over in the photos or video. One other uh, complaint about this figure is the neck piece is the biggest pain to get off. It takes a lot of strength and sometimes I have to use pliers to get this off. So that's makes you not want to change out the head sculpt very much. To get the figure on the glider, you actually have these two egg pieces that are kind of like a screw texture and then a ball at the end. And then you just peg that in there. There's like a rubber material on the inside of this on the glider. And then you basically just any of the holes on the boots, you can choose which ones to use. The ones on the end, I think, stick a little bit better. And yeah, then you just secure him on there. And then you have him on the glider. So again, I so again, I just want to emphasize how awesome the detail is on the back of this harness, just the whole harness in general. The fact that these hooks actually hook on, they're not sculpted, they actually are functional is really amazing. And then there's all this detail, like there's strings on the back looped in here on this harness too. It's just multi-layered. It's just amazing how they're able to do that. And so then you just hook this on. And so, yeah, I mean, technically like all of this, this whole harness is removable. And then you have a whole other harness underneath with more details. Kind of hard to see, but yeah, it looks amazing. It's just so cool to me how they have so much detail and functionality. You know that, I don't know, I guess you just, you don't see anywhere else. You can't get this level of detail anywhere else. So that's just amazing. So when I say I love this figure, I really mean it. A lot of people don't like this. Uh, not many people like this character from Spider-Man. Some people don't like the character design. Um, like I've kind of said in the past, I prefer more realistic takes on characters from the comics. That's just me. I, I didn't grow up with comic books. I grew up with comic book movies. Um, and specifically like the Spider-Man trilogy, Tom McGuire and the Dark Knight trilogy, which did make a lot of changes to the original source material. And those are the movies I tend to like the most. So I think that's just my personal preference. I like just more realistic, interesting takes on characters in terms of costume design, interpretations and all that good stuff. I don't have a problem with it. So I think that's why I just, I like this character. I think uh, they built up his character over the three movies and all that stuff. And, it made sense for him to have a more modern adaptation of his father's costume and all that stuff. But onto the figure itself, I think uh, just because I love the original Spider-Man trilogy, I can't help but just love this figure because um, they didn't make too many figures from that trilogy, unfortunately. Hopefully we're going to get that new Tom McGuire figure from No Way Home soon, which would go great with this figure. That would just be amazing. And they, don't, they didn't make many Spider-Man villains either from... The original trilogy. Of course, now they are with No Way Home. They're kind of making Dr. Octopus and Green Goblin, which I'll probably end up getting. But yeah, I mean, so like before all that was announced, that was when I got this figure. And so I kind of jumped on the opportunity. I was like, wow, this is a great deal. I really want this figure. You know, it's from some of my favorite movies. I felt like this was the one to get. In terms of, you know, like I was kind of blown away, I have to say, by let's just say I didn't have the highest expectations knowing this was an older Hot Toys figure and seeing the pictures I saw online, they weren't the best. They didn't do this figure justice. I'm telling you, when you have this figure in hand, when you have this in person, the head sculpt is still great quality for Hot Toys. Amazing for just being an old figure, still amazing. You really, I don't know, like to me, I still think it looks great. 
older figure or not is really what I'm trying to say. This is a great figure that holds up uh, the functionality. I mean, I would say even the functionality in the costume, the way it's designed and made, all the multi layers, the mixed media, the fact that you can remove basically almost any part of the costume, the fact that they were able to design it that way and to have multiple functions that's accurate probably to the way the costume is in real life. All of that is really great. And that's what exceeds my expectations the most, I think, is I didn't expect that. I didn't expect um, each of those straps to be basically where you can unstrap them with the, you know, in terms of all the, you know, just different functionality, the zippers, everything. So yeah, the positives for this figure for me are definitely the glider lights up, the paint work is amazing on the glider, the fact that it comes with the glider and the fact that it comes with so many accessories, uh, the functionality of the costume, all of that stuff, and the head sculpts. Um, I didn't have high expectations, but that's a big positive for me, the fact that they have an unmasked head sculpt and that it still holds up, you know, being, despite being an older figure is great. The flexibility is great. You know, I feel like they use materials that look great and allow you to have a lot of flexibility in terms of posing. The only complaints I have are the the head sculpt doesn't look great from the side profile. Uh, the head sculpt with the mask on could have a little bit more texture. And to, because to me, it looks great from a distance. But when you look at it a little bit closer, it kind of has that plastic toy look to it. I just feel like if there's just more texture on the mask head sculpt, you know, itself, that would be great. You know, it just, it would look more real. Still great though. Other complaints, I would say, you know, the zipper is pretty fragile. I can tell it's used. Um, so it's kind of falling apart. Some of the stitch work is falling apart a little bit at the seams. Makes sense. It's an older figure. Another complaint that might be a complaint, might not be, is that the sword doesn't go in the back of the sheath on the back, which I thought it did because in the movie, he pulls the sword out from his back. And so it's kind of strange that the sword doesn't really go in any part of the back harness i don't know i mean i don't know if that's accurate to the movie i don't know if like the sword extends or something like i have no idea it's just it's just kind of strange so yeah i mean that's about it. and then the other complaint is the boots the boots look like plastic they don't look real uh i don't know why that is maybe this was early on before hot toys got better at finding the boots i don't know i wasn't around when they were first coming out and that one boot just keeps coming off all the time it doesn't want to peg in on the leg it just it just falls off and no matter how hard I try to like push that boot on, it just, and you can't really articulate the boots very well either. That's kind of, yeah, that kind of sucks. I, f I wish there was one more pumpkin bomb at the very least. It would have been even better if they had another one of the pumpkin bombs with the blade. So that's kind of disappointing, I, I think. And I, I'm trying to remember, but I believe one of the pumpkin bombs actually came out of the collider in the movie. So, you know, with as much functionality as Hot Toys gives to all their figures and accessories, I would have expected them to have a function in the glider where you could slide out that part where the, the bomb comes out. Because that happened in the movie. Now, now that I remember, yeah, that actually did. It, a little tray popped out from the bomb on the glider and a pumpkin bomb was in it. So, like, why didn't they? I mean, maybe it would have been hard to engineer. The glider's pretty thin. But, man, that would have been so cool if they would have had that. And I know this is an older figure, so I'm trying not to go too hard on it, but just I want to be honest with my Hot Toys reviews. That's that's the kind of that's the unique spin I want to put on my Hot Toys reviews because there's a lot of reviews out there. I want to try to be like the Hot Toys critic here. So I'm really trying to think of everything. So the other thing that I would improve on this figure is the computer on the glider is a sticker, you know, and I just feel like Hot Toys is better than that, you know, like and this is just thinking about their most recent figures, right? Maybe there could have been a light up function for that computer and maybe they could have had a translucent screen on it and have the sticker underneath and have the light up function to where, you know, it just, it looks more like the computer, you know? Uh, I also feel like maybe a little bit, I don't know, more contrast on the glider maybe. And maybe like the light up function could have been stronger because as I just showed in the video, it's kind of kind of hard to see, you know? And so maybe if there's the lights are a bit brighter, maybe if there's a few more LED lights. Um, I know with newer Hot Toys figures, there's remotes now that you can turn the lights on and off. That would be kind of cool. 
And with the newest Hot Toys figures that haven't been released yet, like the Mark One Iron Man, you have um, a USB connection to light it up. So if they were ever to do like a reissue of this figure, which I don't think they'll ever do, if they did in a crazy world, it'd be great if they could do like a USB light up function and have motors in the fans. That would be awesome. Yeah, that's just going over above and beyond for me. Not saying that that needs to be done at all, but it just would have been kind of cool. Maybe, maybe there could have been different ways to have them on the collider. Like maybe make the bottom of the collider stand, the clear stand, like wider, so it doesn't fall over as easy, and so you don't have to have them on the, on the uh, the, what do you call it, the clip stand. You don't have to have them on there all the time. You can just have them on the collider stand. Uh, but yeah, I don't trust that glider stand by itself, so I always have them on the clip stand. So, and of course, with the newer Hot Toys figures, like I keep saying over and over, uh, they have that flexible, bendable pole thing. That would be a really cool thing for this figure. Um, but it's an older figure, so I don't know if you know if they had that back then or they used it back then. But the other major complaint I have with this figure is the neck. I mean. It's not just that the neck isn't painted or has no really detail, looks like plastic, but I mean, the neck is almost impossible to get the head sculpt off every single time I try to take the head off. And so it makes me not want to change the head sculpts out at all. Uh, I practically have to use pliers to get the neck off, which damages it. Um, so I don't know if that's just unique to my figure. Let me know down in the comments below, but man, I really, that's really frustrating, you know, because I always feel like I'm going to break the head or break the neck or even the peg on the neck. If I, every time I'm trying to take the head sculpt on and off, it's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, maybe I can modify it or try to find some way or get a different neck sculpt. I don't know. Let me know. Give me some advice, guys. I really don't know what to do. Uh, so yeah, I just, I don't, I hardly ever change the head sculpt out, which is a shame because I, I like both head sculpts, despite, you know, I wish wishing there were more texture on the mask. I just, yeah, that really, that's a huge frustration right there. So this figure, oh man, this is a hard one because I'm just so biased for all the Spider-Man stuff. So naturally, I feel like this figure is probably in my top three Hot Toys figures that I own so far. It's probably in my top three or top five at the very least. So despite all the, you know, the little bit of issues that I have sometimes with it, I wasn't sure about picking up this figure first. I know I definitely wanted it at some point. Um, the main reason I picked it up is because I got such a great deal on eBay. And I wasn't sure because the pictures online, the head sculpt, the unmasked head sculpt didn't look that great. It was an older figure. So of course I had, you know, I was skeptical. But I have to say, now that I have this figure in hand, this figure is 100% worth it. This is a great, if you love this character, if you love Spider-Man 3, or even the original Spider-Man trilogy, and you like Harry Osborn's character, this figure is definitely, definitely worth buying. I have no regrets buying this figure at all. It's one of my top three favorite figures in my collection right now. So yeah, this, I think if you buy this figure and you love Spider-Man, you love this character, you will love this figure. Um, despite the minor little things, problems I had with it, those are so small by comparison to how great this figure is and how great it is just to even have this figure. I mean, Hot Toys doesn't make every character, and I'm so glad they made this one. Um, so all in all, I love this figure. I definitely recommend it if you like the character. And let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have this figure or if you're thinking about it, let me know what you think. Um, let me know your pros and cons. Tell me. And uh, until next time.